Greetings, Minecrafters, and welcome to another Minecraft discussion on this glorious day. My name is Kimberly Quinn, and I am so excited to have a chat with you uh, today about shaking the scarcity mindset in 2023. Shake it. We're just going to kick it right out of the mind. Kick it out. Oh, uh, you know, it's inter- It's always interesting to me how, for some reason, people are, are really focused on making these changes you know, when the new year is about to come, right? New year's resolutions and a lot of them are health related, which is good, right? Diets though, which we know don't work, but anyway, it's a story for another time and new fitness regimens. And then like three weeks in, you know, Craigslist and eBay are loaded with, you know, treadmills and ellipticals and all this stuff. It just fascinates me. And it's instead of, you know, it's nice to make a change whenever I'm just thinking we can actually, we can reinvent ourselves each and every day. Without, we don't need to really pick a day on the calendar like that, you know, but I guess it's the momentum of it. I don't know. We'll see. So, you know, if you are that person that's, which is good, change is change. So who cares? And if that works for you to start, you know, start off with the new year, I think it's excellent. And what, one of the things that we can do for ourselves, it's a gigantic gift is to shake what we call the scarcity mindset. So here's the thing. The human mind is wired to to think negatively. So it's, it's a little bit more of an uphill lift to think positively. So within that, within that, you know, sort of realm, there's something called the scarcity mindset. And most people go straight to money because that's probably the most common way to feel as if to feel lack as if we don't have enough or going without we're deprived, right? Though there are actually other ways to experience scarcity. You can have a scarcity of love, a scarcity of self-esteem, scarcity of time, scarcity of confidence. So we can be in a, in, um, we can become deprivation based for loads of other reasons, though scarcity, and they all gel together. They all gel together because scarcity mindset is a scarcity mindset. So what we're going to do, I was talk talk today about, um, you know, shifting out of this. So just like we've spoken about in other, at other times, we, it's difficult to make any changes until we're aware of them, right? We need to be aware of what's working or what's not working. So if you're finding yourself, you know, continually worrying about money, for example, that is a rock solid way to have a scarcity mindset, constant worrying about paying bills and, and, my salary is not enough. And how am I going to stretch it to pay the bills? And I got to figure out how to get another job because I got to pay the bills. And, you know, and then I got to post date a check if anybody even does that anymore because everything's electronic. Or I got to call the credit card company and see if they'll waive the fee or, you know, scarcity, scarcity, scarcity. And I got a little bit of inspiration coming today uh, from Sarah Bon Brednick, author of Simple Abundance, which is a day book of comfort and joy. And I really like it a lot. Uh, though just a just a smidge because I've read all kinds. I actually uh, I haven't. I'm not quoting from there at this minute, but there is a book out there called Scarcity that's very good. And I would, if you like today's podcast, I would strongly encourage you to. Um, I forget the names of the authors right now. I'm not quoting anything from them or anything, but it, it is a very good book. This is just what a, a sort of a broad sense of what I'm talking about today. Uh, but Sarah Von Brednick taps right into this too, and how we're. Um, when we're worried about, she says, when you're, when you're worried about your health or the health of a loved one, your concentration focuses like a laser. Isn't that the truth, right? Isn't that the truth? Suddenly there's clarity about all, all of life because you realize what is important. Living is important. Every day is a gift. You ask for another chance to get it right. Most of the time you're given it and you're very grateful. So it's interesting how often it takes something a wake up call to shift us out of a scarcity mindset by somebody's, you know, health being threatened, you know, heart attack, or doesn't, I guess have to be that severe. It can be a broken leg, definitely not as severe as something life threatening, but definitely an inconvenience, especially if it's your right leg, then you don't have a chance of driving for a while. And if you're dependent on getting to work that way, like for instance, us, we're out here, thankfully that is not an issue. We're out here in a very rural area. So there is no public transportation. You couldn't, you know, Uber anywhere or anything like that. And so all these other things can really, uh, you know, focus us 
away from the scarcity in our lives, especially the super serious events, can really pull us out of our scarcity. Now, isn't it, isn't it unfortunate that it can that it it often tends to take something as huge as a broken leg or a heart attack to redirect us toward, you know, the this precious precious gift of life and all the abundance going on for us, all of the abundance, everything going right with our day. Every one in our lives, you know, kind of working for us and not saying perfect, no one is, but you know, when things are, are, are pretty good or even things aren't pretty good, but some things are going well and we just get so locked into that spiral down and then it, and then we, we're shaken away from it by, by something huge. So, you know, just like anything else, right? We, we can't do what we don't know. We cannot do what we don't know. And then once we have this awareness of what's working for us or what is not working for us, only then can we really redirect, you know, and we've talking, we talked, we've talking, we've talked a lot about listening to the whispers. You know, my dear friend Oprah, she doesn't know, but I love her so much, talks a lot about listening to the whispers before they're bricks, right? And, and it's very important to pay attention to our lives. So, and if we back it up a little bit, because our lives, it's the whole premise for Minecraft, right? The whole foundation is, you know, thoughts first, feelings second, actions or behaviors last. So our thoughts dictate how we feel. Therefore, if we ch- when we change our thinking, we literally change our lives. So it's very, very important, of utmost importance to be paying attention to the dialogue, the, the thought chatter, the monkey mind, themes what's going on with this that that hamster in the wheel kind of theme if we're rolling that just rolling 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 around with what about paying my bills i'm gonna pay it and it just it, it just and that this attracts more of it that's just how it works so so sarah then says but worries about money mock you they steal the joy of living because they follow you around all day like a like a dark menacing shadow isn't that the truth? At night, they hover at the foot of your bed, waiting to rob you of sleep. Also true. When you're worried about money, you dread the days and you agonize at night. Uh, without thinking, you throw away every precious 24 hours that come your way. You cease to live and merely exist. Man, Sarah, you said that well, sister. Oh, my gosh. Oh, and we've talked about autopilot being the number one thief of our valuable, our precious, precious life minutes. And the only thing is just saying that we're robbed of them, right? We're robbed of them. Really, we're giving them away on a on like beautiful Italian china. Here you go, because we are passive players in our lives instead of being, you know, sort of active first string players in our lives. And this is the the change we've got to make. We, becoming the boss of your brain is the ticket, because as as we said, you know, our life is basically this beautiful blank canvas. And we can we can paint whatever picture we want for ourselves on there, and if we are allowing this feedback loop, this negative internal dialogue of you know money stress to just roll through over and over and over again, not only are we miserable, but we are that we're creating a life of miserable because because thoughts lead to feelings, so we can't think scarcity. I'm sorry, we can't feel scarcity, feel deprived. Feel as all the worry of how am I going to pay this bill? How am I going to pay the electricity? How am I going to pay the rent or the mortgage? We can't feel all that fear, fear based stuff, and then getting uh, depressed about it. We can't feel fear based, feel depressed, and without thinking, you know, fear bra- fear based thoughts and depressing thoughts first. That is what we call the scarcity mindset. Now, again, it can be money, it can be. Um, we're deprived of love, to self-esteem, um, self-worth, which is a little different, confidence, you know, time. There are all different ways to feel scarcity, but I think this is a good, this is, the money one seems to be the easiest and clearest example, the scarcity mindset, and it will take over because remember, this is primal. We're from way back when we were, you know, ducking in and out of caves, being chased by saber-toothed ty- tigers, it was, we had to survive, you know, way back then, well, we have to survive now too, but you know what I mean? So we are constantly on the lookout for something ready to get us. And so that we're, we're prone to negative thinking. So if, if we don't make the effort to climb out of and shake, shake off the scarcity mindset, it will honestly just eat us alive. 
I mean, even if we just look at this logically, right? Sarah's talking about about being worried about money, being in the scarcity mindset. That uh, are they said that we have the joy of living stolen from us because our she said our thoughts follow us around all day. But really, they're leading us around all day, right? Uh, like a menacing shadow, she says, and then they're right there waiting for us when we get up. Who, who have, you know, I'm sure probably most of us have had this happen. You know, of course, we're also priming how we wake up with how we sleep. So it's not, that's not a big surprise. If we go to bed worrying about bills, we're going to wake up worrying about bills too. That's just how it works. We prime the mind at night for how our day starts the next day. And, and you know, think of this, this emotional, this mental agony leading to emotional agony with all this panic and fear and, and, and then maybe feeling defeated and all that. None of it happens unless we allow it. So Sarah says, if you are worried about money today, take heart. You have the power to change your lifestyle and move from a feeling of lack and deprivation to a feeling of abundance and fulfillment. You have the power. That's what we're talking about. Money ebbs and flows in our lives, which should remain constant is our realization that abundance is our spiritual birthright. And then she says, um, American gospel singer Mahalia... Mahalia Jackson once said that it is easy to be independent when you've got money, but to be independent when you haven't got a thing, that's the Lord's test. This is why, uh, sorry, this is what I've learned and share with the seeker in you. The simpler we make our lives, the more abundant they become. There is no scarcity except in our souls. That's right, because we, well, the thinking is what leads to the feelings again. There are no there are no feelings of spiritual scarcity unless we're having thoughts about it. That is the ticket. And then lastly, what I really want to say is that um, we know that when we, uh, in, addition, in addition to being miserable, okay, with allowing miserable thoughts such as, you know, fear-based thoughts about money and all, all the stuff we just talked about, not only are we miserable, but we're also bringing more of it on because that's how it works with the universe. When we We attract what we put out there. So for allowing all these thoughts of lack, lo and behold, we attract more lack. We attract more bills and we attract more, um, you know, circumstances where we're not able to pay them. It's just how it works. And so gratitude is also key here. Grateful that maybe we can pay. If we have five bills, we can pay one. I'm grateful I can pay one. Grateful for all, all also other things, not bill related. Grateful, 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 because the more gratitude we send, we put out there to the universe, higher power, if you want to call it, the more abundance comes our way. Because think about it. If we are not grateful for what we already have, why would the universe want to send more? Think about it like this, especially we just got through Christmas and Hanukkah here. Um, If you gave someone a gift for Christmas or Hanukkah, let's say a birthday, and they and they and they take it from me. It's all wrapped up beautifully, beautiful wrap job and bows and everything. And you say, "Okay, thanks for the gift." And you set it on the table. I'll look at it later. Is that fr- excuse me? Is that friend or family member going to want to give you anything? Give you another present? Probably not. Well, the universe isn't different, and there's infinite abundance out there, infinite abundance. But if you're not grateful for even any of the small things you already have, then why in the world? Why in the universe would you be given any more? It just doesn't make logical sense. Okay, so to wrap up here, uh, in order to shake the scarcity mindset, you've got to first be aware of what a scarcity mindset is. So we talked about that. It's being in a place of lack, deprivation, feeling like you don't have enough of of, of whatever. Again, money, self-esteem, love, time, whatever. And also... Uh, the thoughts lead to fe- thoughts lead to feelings lead to behavior. So if when we're allowing scarce scarcity thoughts, no big surprise, we feel deprived. So it's very very important to pay attention to whatever the dialogue is. Because only with the awareness of whatever is or isn't working can we make a change. And then, lastly. The, the key to shaking the scarcity mindset, in addition to acknowledging it first, so you can boot it out, is to then shift into a place of gratitude. Shift into a place of gratitude. Start with the smaller things. Just thank you for the cup of hot tea. I'm grateful for this cup of hot tea. I'm grateful that 
I got to work without any traffic. I'm great, they're grateful that I got to work without a car accident or even a fender bender. Small stuff. And when we do that, well, it's 21 days is, is the average for a habit to shift and stick. Lo and behold, you will find yourself noticing more positive things um, in your day. For me, it's three. I, I do three things in the morning in a gratitude journal. You can also say them, but the word is way more powerful. So, shaking the scarcity mindset absolutely 100% involves a change, a shift into an attitude of gratitude. So that's basically it. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off from the beautiful, chilly northern Vermont. Have a mindful day. Thank you.